Hi guys, it's Lowen Freak and welcome back to the farm series. Today we're covering um, semi-automatic farms. So it's a step up from the old manual farm that we did last week. Today we're focusing on flushing farms. They come in different varieties. So we've got your gravity block type ones and we've got also the dispenser type ones. But before we get stuck into that, we'll cover off some of the basics around water flow and then we'll get stuck into the actual block by block tutorial. So if you want to skip ahead to that, please um, look at the description below and I'll have a timestamp there for you and feel free to skip right ahead and get stuck into the block by block. All right, so water blocks. Um, understanding how far that water flows is really important for these farms. So for those that don't know, um, a water source block will flow eight blocks. So you can see that here. We've got the source there, so that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's pretty much standard across the board. So Java or Bedrock, that pretty much uh, is the rule. Um, you can use that to your advantage as well. So as you can see here, we've got the same eight blocks, but if we step it up one, uh, the water will flow down and keep going. So on the top tier here, we've got actually seven blocks. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And on the eighth block, it actually goes down by a block and then continues on its eight blocks. So you can step that out as far as you like, um, which will maximize the uh, utility, if you will, of the um, gravity block or the dispenser type flushing farm. So as you can see here, I'm showing uh, the gravity type, which is which you can use either sand or gravel, whatever's easiest or whatever you've got the most access to in your world. And then we've got the dispenser type, which is a little bit more expensive on the resource side, but it does give you uh, two more crops just the way, just because of the way that it actually works. So it spits out a bucket of water, which becomes the source block there, and then um, gives you that eight blocks. Whereas the gravity type um, design sort of choose out two blocks because you've got your source block sitting there doing not much, just waiting to be used. Then you've got your gravity block, which is holding the water back. And then you can, um, then it's your crops, which is a total of six blocks there. So it's, it's up to you which, which way you go. Um, th this tutorial will cover off the gravity block design in any case, but um, you know, two blocks, it, it, it can make a difference. It, it's entirely up to you. So how the circuit works? Well, I can show you right now. So here we've got a uh, lever. So when when you actually activate it or deactivate it, in this case, uh, this will turn on the redstone dust below it, which then turns off this torch, which depowers that piston there, which drops the sand and the water just flows and breaks the crops, um, leaving them at your feet. And then when you turn, turn it off, well, it comes back to this state where it deactivates or depowers that redstone dust, which turns on the torch, which powers that, piston and pushes the sand back up and stops the water from flowing. So I can just show you quickly how this works. And you can see the redstone dust is now lit up, that torch is off, which is depowered that piston, dropping the sand and allowing the water to break the crops. And then when I switch it, switch it off, that circuit's reversed, pushing that piston and sand back up and blocking that water source. It's as simple as that. Okay, on to the next. So what I've shown here as well is how you do it in Java. Just a subtle difference um, just between the two platforms. Um, I've introduced a redstone repeater here, which powers that block, which then powers that redstone, pushing the piston up or down, depending on the state of the circuit. Um, that's the, the, the subtle differences between the two. I will do a separate tutorial on that. Um, but I just thought I'd show it just in case anyone's here that's playing on Java and really wants to build this farm. Just um, I'll just pause it here so you can take a quick snapshot so or screen capture. So when we go over to actually building the farm, you can uh, just swap out the circuit a little bit to adjust it. Okay, here's the item list. You will need some water, some blocks of choice, either oak or cobblestone, whatever's easier for you. Um, some torches to light the place up. Uh, in terms of redstone, 13 bits of redstone dust should do the trick. You'll need a redstone torch, a redstone repeater, seven normal pistons, then choice of gravel or sand, I'll leave that to you. 
um, a, a button, a wooden button, um, some fences potentially, again that's optional, and you'll need a hoe as well. I'll just pause it here. Great. Okay, seeing how the farm works in action. So here I've got um, uh, just the basic design. I'll point out a couple of the main differences. So you can see here, we've got the water blocks on the sides there instead of the center. Um, they, they can be either at that block, which is uh, one, two, three in, or you could have it on the fourth. It really doesn't matter. They're hidden in any case, and you'll see that in the block by block um, coming up. And then you've got the main differences, which is the redstone circuit running down the middle of um, the farm itself. Plus, at the back here, you can actually see the pistons, how I've wired it up with the redstone, um, and that's that's pretty much it right there. So what I can do is just show you quickly by pressing the button how it all works. Like that, and that's it. The button turns it back off. So it just pulses, water comes out, and then the pistons go back up, and there we go. Okay, so let's build this thing. Here we've got a nine by 10 area. The black and yellow show you the farmland and the orange is for the border. So find the center and let's dig a trench and go for it. So we go down by three blocks, one, two, three, and just follow that right to the end. And once you reach the end, we have to go out three blocks. Like that, in each direction. Okay, so once you've got this outline, we can get started on the border. I'll use cobblestone, I think, today, uh, but feel free to use whatever block you like. So at the front of the farm, we just go down by one block, like so, and just put in your border like that. And on the sides, we actually just stay at ground level. So simple, just Fill it in like that, right to the end. And same on the other side. So this gives you an outline of the farm itself. Now before we go any further, let's put in our water blocks. That way we don't have to worry about it later. So grab your water. I like to count in about three blocks. Three or four, doesn't really matter. Let's go four. That's there. Same on the other side. And that's the water blocks done. Now, we can start on the redstone. So get your redstone bits and pieces out. We'll get our dust torch and our pistons and even the button why not okay so I like to start with the pistons first so from the back go down a block and just place them like this okay so once we've got the pistons in let's start with the switch itself so we place our button on top. We put a block on the ground there and some redstone dust. Then two more bits of dust on the ground. A block, your redstone torch, and some more dust, three more bits of dust. One, two, three. Now come around to the back of the pistons. Put your some blocks down 
like so. And then get your redstone dust, put it across, and you should start seeing the pistons go up. Now at this point, for the Java users, that's where, you, right under there, is, is uh, where you'd put your um, repeater. I've just got it there just to show you, but um, otherwise for, you, for your bedrock users, that's all you have to do. Okay, so once you've got something like that, we'll move on to the next piece. So this is where you get your sand or your gravel out and you simply just put it on top of your pistons like so. So once you've got that, then we can carry on to the next bit, which is creating the water channel. Now, this is quite simple. Um, again, you can use whatever block you want, but all we have to do is um, place some water behind this sand. So the best way to do that is a, just a simple water channel like so there and cap it off like that it should look something like that now get your water buckets if you're not familiar with how to create water sources and you've got seven buckets just put one in each spot or if you know how to do your water sources, I probably don't need to tell you, but you just put one there, skip one, go there, creates a water source, grab your water from there, again, skip one, and then rinse and repeat. So you should have seven source blocks of water right behind that sand. So when you've got something like that, we're ready to, to actually close up the farm itself. Okay, so, Let's finish off the farm by closing it. So you just put your dirt down. Now, I didn't include that in the materials list, so I apologize for that, but uh, you will need some dirt to finally close off that um, last piece or the last channel that we just did there. Okay, so let's test the farm now. It should, it should function, so press the button. Perfectly. Test it one more time. That's great. So believe it or not, that's pretty much the, the farm and all the redstone done. Now it's a matter of just tilling the soil as you would and planting your crops. So just do that quickly. And let's grab some crops. I think I just might alternate between carrots and potato. Uh, let's do some wheat, why not? Okay, so that's the crops done. I'll come right back once they're grown. Okay, now through some magic of editing, the crops are fully grown. Let's test out the farm to see how it works. And just like that, there's your semi-auto farm. Now you can keep pressing the button if you want, it'll just push the crops forward, just so you don't have to walk that little uh, extra step or two. But in a nutshell, that's it. That's your semi-auto farm. Now you can decorate the rest of it as, as you'd like. Again, you could put um, fence posts up, which is probably not a bad idea, but I, one thing I do recommend is getting your torches out and lighting it up really well. So that way your crops will grow at night. And if you are farming at night, it's less likely that uh, any mobs will spawn and uh, ruin your farming experience that night. Okay guys, well, there you have it. There's your basic flushing farm. Um, it's a bit ugly at the moment. Uh, probably shouldn't, shouldn't have used cobble. Um, there's a lesson in that. Uh, I think uh, wood probably would have looked better. I think I've got a sample over there in, in any case. But um, if you have any questions, uh, just drop them in the comment section below and I will get back to you. Um, the next one will be a tiered flushing farm. I may even use dispensers. Uh, it just depends uh, what the feedback is. 
Um, again, it, it is a little bit more expensive with dispensers, um, but you do get a little bit more crops out of it in any case. But um, on that note, uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys real soon. I'm Lion Freak and have a great day. Bye now.